I was just remembering how in in 1992, after that year at Schumacher College, I was at home at my parents' house in, in Skillgate in Somerset. Completely, that natural step thing had fallen through and I was, I was all mixed up with, with a whole lot of this um, Schumacher College type stuff and, and also trying to, trying to learn a bit more mathematics because I'd realized that I, at the, that time I'd only had a, I had a, a D in A-level mathematics, which is practically a fail. No, I didn't get it. I, it was worse than that. I, I got lower than a D. I, I got an O. So at that time, English secondary education was divided into ordinary and advanced level, and you did ordinary level up to about you did ordinary level examinations around the age of fifteen or sixteen, and. And then you went on and studied two, two years at, at a sixth form college and you did an advanced level. And I, I don't know what they call them now, AS or something. But for my efforts at A level, they gave me another O level grade. So in other words, in mathematics, by the age of by then I was 22 or something. The age of 22, I, I only had another, I only had O-level mathematics. And I, I was doing all this programming and I did some programming while I was at Schumacher College. I worked for for Stefan Harding, and um, Stefan was working for an Oxford um, an Oxford biologist who studied cetacea. Oh, I can't remember his name. He ran a project called Cetacea Watch, which was trying to which was trying to to um, collect observations of whale and dolphin populations um, collecting data from all sorts of sources and plotting them on a, plotting them on maps and they had a, a little Apple Mac program that did these plots and so I, they wanted a Windows version, so I used my Windows, my Windows 3.0 SDK, and I wrote them a, a a Windows version of the of the Mac app. And that's when I learned about the World Vector Shoreline dataset, and I used that to to produce kind of arbitrary arbitrary maps from. WVS, freely available WVS data. That was quite good fun. I carried on for a few years. I carried on. His name is Peter. We went to Oxford to talk to him once. Jane and I before we were married. That was quite good fun, but nothing really uh, came of it. I, I I got a bit involved in in, in by that time I'd been uh, I'd started this open university. I was doing 
the first year trying to catch up on my maths. Anyway, so after Schumacher College 1992, I went home and I, I just didn't know what to do. And I was reading lots of Gregory Bateson. And I remember once, um, Gregory Bateson, my my mum was a great fan of Gregory Bateson. She had lots of his books. And, and I was reading those. Uh, um, Mind and Nature. And that collection of essays. I can't remember what that's called. And... Um, And, and that Metalogues, um, that, that book, Angel's Fear, which was posthumously written with his daughter. And he died in 1983 or 1984, I think. I remember crying because I thought this was the, the only man I, that, that, that would understand what was going on in my... This was the, you know, I, I thought he, his work was, that was what I wanted to do and he's, he was dead. He died of, died of lung cancer in the, in the hot tubs at Esalen, I think. That's how he ended his life. But then, <clears throat> then I started reading um, Francisco Varela's from from the William Irwin Thompson's those two Gaia books that William Irwin Thompson published. And I was reading Francisco, and I thought, Ah, Francisco Varela, he's he's the, he's the man. I should go and, and I formulated a kind of plan to, to, to just go to Paris <laughs> and turn up at Ecole Polytechnique, or I think that's where he was teaching at the time, and just say, I want to, I want to study stuff. <laughs> and uh, I think I told Simon Thornton about this once, and I was formulating this plan. And, um, I don't know, my life is complete chaos. But then a few years later, Francisco Varela died of cancer as well. He also smoked, I think. But I've just been reading, um, that Robert Logan paper on information, which I found it because he references uh, Catherine Hale's book. Um, that's a really interesting, interesting paper. Catherine Hales is a professor of English. Uh, I'm, I'm really amazed at how much, how much of the science she's, and what a, a grip she has on that. That's incredible. And maybe it's partly most, partly motivated by by reading science fiction and, and looking at analyzing works of people like Philip K. Dick.
So I'm wondering if I can convince my daughter that... Uh, I don't know. Convince my daughter to come over to LA and bring me a... Bring me one of my copper bottom saucepans so that I can cook David Lynch's quinoa recipe with amino acid seasoning. Because I have a feeling that the copper bottom saucepan is a very important part of the recipe. Copper has all sorts of amazing thermal and electrical properties. I can't imagine the recipe would work if you if you didn't have the um, amino acids or the, the copper. <laughs> Sorry, this is a very, very loose, um, but I'm going to post a, vid a, a, a video I made last night because I spent the whole day with Austin and William talking about control systems and electric motors and things and then uh, it was it was no, it was 10 o'clock and nine nine o'clock by the time I I, I got home and uh, So it's going to take some while adjusting to, to, to... I mean, it wasn't really work, we were just talking and I'm not... I'm not sure we really got anywhere. But you're just trying to kind of... link the minds together a bit. And, uh, I was wondering whether Donald Mackay was, was, whether David Mackay was any relation to Donald Mackay. Because that, that paper on, on, on it by Logan talks about Donald Mackay's um, semantic semantics of information revolution that was written in January 2012 Boy, this, this, um, it's, it's getting awfully, awfully complicated. Um, I, I need to try and f focus on, um, some,
just the amount of writing. How, how do we? How, how do human? How, how are we ever going to manage this? The, the, the amount of material that people have written is is just so vast, and that's even without people who, you know, this ebook publishing, online ebook publishing industry that's cropped up during during the pandemic. People. producing ebooks and earning tens of thousands of dollars from material and none of which they had to write themselves and they're just downloading it and sticking it in ebooks and good grief It's really important to have to have filters for to filter out the divergent stuff and it's uh well Lewis Carroll what's her name lady Sylvie and Bruno, the algorithm for, 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 for finding the, the lowest common multiple, for, for emptying the libraries. It's in that, it's the, the quote in that, um, that thing I wrote in September 2011. It's amazing what a what a poor quality um, reproduction of of Sylvie and Bruno was in the project Gutenberg, and it was, it was just full of horrible errors. If you look at that that revolution one that I wrote and I, at the time the only I just grabbed that text from Project Gutenberg it's it's horrible that's why I redid the Sylvie and Bruno so I'll put a link to that as well Interesting that the first use of the word information was in short was by Chaucer and I guess in the Canterbury Tales Information skills and technologies of Dame Prudence. <laughs> I should I should have read the Canterbury Tales apparently. I guess my daughter's read the Canterbury Tales. I'm sure you have to study that stuff if you study English at Cambridge. It must be a required reading. Especially if your mother's name is Carey. Although there are apparently hardly any relation. So my daughter did tell me that she watches some of my videos sometimes, so... How about it, Helen? <laughs> 